Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of Blast from the Past, the series where I look at some World of Tanks games from time gone by, and maybe compare with current day World of Tanks. So why not start off with a game on a short-lived version of a map that is long gone, Severogosk. Oh, and take a look at the enemy platoon, it'll be important later. Severogorsk was a winter map based around supposedly a gulag camp near Belogorsk in the east. This is probably not the most culturally sensitive thing or game you've done with the game. However, looking at maps of the area, there is indeed a river through the town. No large open bodies of water anywhere nearby. Instead, I'm choosing to believe it's actually a play on Severomorsk from the Russian Sever and Mor, meaning North Fleet, a fitting name for a location chosen to be in the main administrative base of the Russian Northern Fleet. Severomorsk is hilly, is a host river is in the north, so snowy, and looks apart, so it fits well. It seems at this point I was suffering a little bit from lag. As you can see I've got a ping of roughly 200 to 250. And that's why I crashed into a statue. Okay. Ignoring that, let's move on. Work across the first major difference as I see it from old World of Tanks to new World of Tanks. The larger caliber guns have had their sounds changed to be a bit more boomy, but the smaller caliber guns, such as the autocannon here on the looks, seems to have been made a little bit more tinny in new versions of the world. I have to say, I preferred the older gun sounds from the looks at least. Not really wanting to get into a pool with large tanks, I decide to make a move and get away. Unfortunately I get spotted, so I dive into some cover. And don't wait here quite long enough. That means that as I escape, shot in the side for half my health from the enemy type 58. But that's okay. I can't get revenge on him, but I can get revenge on his platoon mates. The river is dry and frozen so it makes an ideal hidden path to get in behind the enemy tanks. Artillery is spotted, so that's where I'm going to be making my move. But, ooh, KV-1S, the beast of tier 6, a bit overpowered, but doesn't have gun depression over the rear of its tank. Yes, I couldn't have asked for a juicier target. It has, of course, been nerfed now and turned into a tier 5 heavy tank. That was something that was definitely needed. Time to go and get the artillery. I'm spotted now, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. My team's been pushing hard, and there's not much an artillery piece can do against the light tank, where it's driven well. Why, hello there. Now the unfortunate thing about this artillery is, is that even if every shell had gone in, it's still to kill them. So there's a bit of adjusting to be done here. And the lag strikes again, and I really should have driven past him. Right next to him. Luckily he wasn't able to get a shot off at me. And look who's coming. The M41. You might recognise him from earlier. I pointed him out at the start, he's a member of the platoon with the Type 58. <laughs> oh dear. Two platoon mates for one. That's for shooting me earlier. Right, so here's the enemy ELC. I lead a little bit and put some shots in. Now, unfortunately, I can no longer say that this tank hasn't been changed. I really liked it before, but Wargame have taken all the fun out of it with the latest changes. It is balanced for the tier, but I would have seen it as a tier 6. Oh, 
half pub from the rear is easy damage. And unfortunately, I don't get enough time to reload a 16 second clip. I can see that my Churchill is having trouble with this T150. So that's where I decided to go and help out next. Shots have been traded by both sides. The T150 is now on very low health. So is our Churchill. But I might be able to do some damage. If not, I should be able to track him. Last, I should have just shot him up the rear, just like the KV1S. Take a hit there from the KV13. Not good. T150 is dead, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. What I should really have done here is just hung around the bottom of that cliff to try and get around behind the KV13. Luckily, target prioritization means he takes up the heavy tank rather than myself. I've seen the ELC on the map, and if he gets amongst the artillery, he can cause quite a big problem. So, I head back. And he's taken out by our TD. Time to flank. Although steep hills aren't the quickest way to get around, even in a light tank. One thing they've done with the map, and one thing that they did in particular with Servigorsk, was to remove the hills in the map and make it a lot flatter. I personally don't think that worked. I think they made the map less playable rather than more. Okay, no success. He didn't spot me. Let's see if we can surprise him. We don't want him spotting us. So this is going to be a cautious approach, and then we're going to run for it as soon as we've emptied the clip. Okay, so he's focused on my allies, so over the ridge, aim, fire, pull back, run away, run away, run away. fast enough. He won't survive a very long though. He takes a shell, having been distracted by me, and now this issue 152 is going to plant a 122mm shell right in his side. Game over. Okay, let's take a look at the results. Ace tanker, patrol duty. I actually spotted nine different tanks for damage by my allies, and that added up to 2,362 damage by assistance. Direct damage done was 2,084 with 3 kills. I finished top of my team in both XP and damage done, far in excess of anyone else on either my team or the enemy team. 88 shots fired, 70 hits, 59 penetrations. That's not bad considering I'm using a bullet hose. Damage done is 2,084. I received three hits, three of which penetrated. Not surprising, considering that I'm in a light tank. I was running with a premium account at the time. That gave me a total profit of just over 54,000. And XP earned was 2,497. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll come back for some more insights into some old games. Cheerio.